Welcome back everybody, this is M-Dog and we're going to really just focus a short video here on the marker rod. I'm still seeing a lot of questions about how to use it and I think some of that is probably just because folks are a little hesitant to spend the silver uh, on, on purchasing one. It has been useful for me, I've enjoyed getting the additional information. If you saw my previous video here on Amber Lake, you may have uh, seen where I described how to use the marker rod at that point, but I wanted to show you a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So um, I do have two different markers here, both the blue M1BL, which is a seven gram, and then the marker M2FL, which is a 15 gram. And uh, I've only used the blue one, so I think I will try the yellow one. Uh, during this video, we'll make sure it works the same way. Um, color does come into play a little bit, and I will show you why when we get out to the pond. Um, we also have the marker lead here. Um, the only thing I would say as far as setting this up when you're considering getting one, and I will show you how to use it here in a minute, but when you're considering getting one, I think the thing to consider, to me, the most important thing to consider is the test, just to make sure that um, when you set it up, you're obeying the test of the rod that you actually purchased. And, and, and let me show you what I mean by that. If you go to the store, you do have some options here. The one I got is the least expensive. We'll go down here to marker rods and you'll see we have three different options with options within each category. So I purchased the Siberia uh, Fortuna marker, which is going to run you around a thousand silver, just under that if you purchase it at a cheaper lake than Amber Lake. The Dominator marker made by West Hill is going to run you considerably more, uh, somewhat, uh, over 2,000 for sure, no matter where you purchase it, over 2,500 no matter where you purchase it. Uh, and the, one of the major differences that you'll start to see in these rods is going to be the test. The reason to get the more expensive one, from my understanding, and you can get really high here as we're up to four grand, this would probably come in just under four grand at the less, less expensive um, less expensive map, but um, this is the Atlas marker, which also gives you plus 10 to casting distance, which that's the whole point. If, if you get the more expensive one, what you're doing is you're trying to get a little more casting dif distance out of the marker rod. And, 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 and though I haven't tested the more expensive ones, I do believe that is going to be the difference. So let's look at the marker. Um, this, th this is going to be the, the marker lead that you can purchase. And this is where matching that test up. So when you're purchasing your rod, go ahead and look at your marker lead and make sure that you're getting uh, a marker lead whose grams, the weight of it is not going to put you over the test. You're, you're wanting to be uh, within the right test. There's two different marker leads here. I ended up going with this one and uh, then just kind of setting up the test to make sure it was going to be appropriate. And let me see if I can figure out where the marker float is. Here it is. Um, you've got two different options here. I got one of each. Neither one of them are glowing. I'm wondering if later we might have a glowing one. That would be really helpful. Um, you can read the description. This one says designed for medium or short distances. And then this one mentions that it is a little better at uh, long distance casting with high precision. So the first one I got was the M1BL. That's the only one I've used so far. But like I said, I want to use this yellow one. I purchased them both at the same time. But uh, initially I bought the, the blue one first and then I was like, oh, maybe I'll try the stubby one as well. Um, they are running about 90 silver here at Amber Lake for both variations. So again, it's just for how far are you casting is the main consideration uh, on those. So let's go um, look and see how you use it. And I want to, um, I'm just going to show you a demonstration here in the pond. Uh, I have not ever tested the pond, so this will be interesting. Um, so let's go ahead and set this at, uh, we'll do a short one first. We'll do a 20 meter, 20 meter clip here. So when you're using this, um, the, the two goals for the marker rod, the two pieces of information that you're going to get that should help you in terms of knowing a little bit more about the areas you're fishing in, uh, is going to be the consistency or the type of bottom uh, of the ground that you're fishing on and as well as the depth and so that those pieces of information will help namely in a in in bottom or feeder fishing 
uh, in the in the first case and in the second case it'll help you with float fishing and how far you want to set your depth so we're just going to cast this out a little bit let it go its full uh, distance and you will see that the float is sitting upon the water and what you want to do first is tighten your line up just a little bit which we will do here and now did you see how it just popped up like that that's going to be important here in a second is is getting used to how to do that but now we're going to go down to real speed five you can do different real speeds but whatever you do is going to, have to be a little slower than you normally would and then just slowly reel it in and if you're doing it right you'll get an, a notification so now in the bottom left hand side of the screen you should say um, you should see where it says soil and then it's going to give you different information in this case it's clay there's different bottoms in the game um, a lot of the spots at amber lake are clay uh, but there certainly are other ones as well uh, we've seen uh, shell sandy bottom there's a lot of sludge out there in certain certain parts um, there's weeds that you can find and and then of course in different lakes different rivers you're going to find um, you know different consistencies and for bottom fishing a lot of what that's going to do is if if you really want to get into it in terms of carp fishing or even fishing for other species potentially at that point you're going to be lead you're going to be matching up your um, lead core with your sinker and you see both of these are for clay. Uh, you can see it in the name on the sinker and in the color description for the lead core. Now, if you're not fishing for carp, you may just have a sinker. Um, and then in that case, you would be potentially matching it up. But I think these are a little more focused on carp fishing. Uh, at least that's my impression. Someone that knows more about real life fishing or even more about this game may tell me that I'm wrong on that, but it seems like that is the focus of a lot of this uh, the, of this update in terms of the new gear and equipment that's put in the game. Okay, so that's how you see the bottom, right? I haven't done anything else other than reeled it on real speed five until soil uh, clay comes up. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna hit enter, which is gonna open your bale, okay? And the reason why I only did a 20, 20 meter cast here so it'd be really easy to see it. And so now you can see that the float is back to the surface and as soon as you close your bail back, so hit enter again, and then all you're gonna do is give it a couple taps. Basically, you just need to reel until it stands up or until you get the slack out of the line. Now it gives us our depth. If you can, and you can see the float has kind of changed its direction. It's almost standing straight up. And that tells us that right out there, 20 meters from where I am right now, it is 1.35 meters in depth. Okay, and so what can that be helpful? Obviously, if you're float fishing in that spot, you may want to set the depth at 120, 130, you, you know, 1.3, you may want, not 130, 1.3, you may want it to be just above the bottom in a lot of cases um, with a little bit of room there, but, but not much so that, you know, fish that are swimming along the bottom will see your bait presentation. So those are the two pieces of information that you get from the marker rod. Now, let me... Um, and this is where color comes into play. Let me do something else for you here. Let's do a 60 meter cast straight across the pond with the uh, smaller one that allows for more pr precision. Okay, now I'm, I'm pretty sure that we have room here to go 60 meters. Uh, if this lands on the shore over there, I'm gonna be a little embarrassed, but I don't think that will be the case. Okay, plenty of room, barely halfway across. All right, so same thing. Let's do what we did before. Put our retrieval speed down. Well, first let's tighten it up. And now let's go. Retrieval speed five. It already told you depth. Sometimes if you hang it up, if you pop it up right in the beginning, it'll tell you depth before you've even gotten the soil read. I'm not sure if that's working as intended, but it does do that. So now we've got clay, okay? So it's clay out there as well. Now, let's open the bale, like I've showed you. Let's look out there and see that it's up above the water, and it is. I have binoculars, so I can do the double zoom, right? And then, let's see if we can get this thing to pop up and get the depth reading. There we go. So the depth is 2.45. Now, here is another use. I even popped it up even better there. So now it's sitting straight straight up. Here's another use for the marker rod that I've actually started to really enjoy doing. 
I will leave that in the water like that. When I'm at a place that I want to fish, I will leave that in the water so that I have a target. Because if you're using the spide rod, uh, which is this thing here, and you're delivering the ground bait and crushed boilies and everything in your dry mix uh, out to a certain spot, and if you're going to have all three lines trying to fish in the same spot so that the uh, dry um, ground bait and boilies that you've put out there will attract fish, then it's nice to have a target, right? So, you know, you're going to get your lines out. You're going to put them on 60 meters. And then you're going to have a target to cast at. Now, this is really helpful. In the daytime, it's somewhat helpful. I'm finding in the nighttime, it's especially helpful. It, with as big as Amber Lake is, it is sometimes impossible to see the landmarks that you're often aiming at across the lake. And so for me, it's been helpful to have that. Now, this is where color comes into play. I kind of wish I had gotten the opposite colors in the style of float marker floats I got. Blue is hard to see at night, turns out. <laughs> and so I do wonder if with the yellow skinny one that gives you good distance and precision, at nighttime, it might be a little bit easier to see. It's not glowing, so it's not going to be really easy to see but the yellow may be a tad bit easier to see at night and and i just you know when when i'm not so broke because i'm trying to purchase all the new boily and dip combinations and get my gear settled and all that i will um i'll probably go ahead and get a second one in yellow just to be able to see so but either way um those are the two main purposes for the marker rod but then a third bonus use that has been really helpful for me. So I wanted, wanted to share that in case you had not gone in and purchased the marker rod yet and you're trying to figure out, is it worth it? Uh, it is certainly fun to use, fun to get that additional information. If you're doing a lot of carp fishing, it's probably useful information that's worth having as you bounce around Amber Lake or even spots on, on Bear or other places. It may be worth getting the reed on the bottom and then when you're float fishing worth getting that specific depth at a specific location and then also to be able to leave that marker out there at times to give you a target uh, I do not believe that that is going to disrupt your fishing at all to have the float just sitting out there so anyway I don't want to belabor the point this is marker rods uh, this is you know to me it's been a it's been a fun addition to this game to have this piece of equipment uh, this rig in the game now. So uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. If you don't agree with anything I've said, if your experience has been different, please let me know. I know some people have talked about, especially in other places, getting some like ghost snags with the marker rig. I haven't experienced that yet. Uh, at least it hasn't disrupted my ability to test uh, test the bottoms and such. So um, I think it's been uh, overall a very good piece of equipment. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you... Um, will uh, let me know if you have any feedback and I'll look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks again.